to talk a little bit about leash handling, which is something that um, actually my assistant Nick had brought up that we should really talk about. Um, and we're just going to have this as an accessible video for everybody because I think that that's really important. Um, leash handling is really knowing what the leash is and is not for. Um, there's a lot of temptation to use this to steer your dog. This should just be an emergency break. Um, this should not be the communication tool for your dog. Um, often, when, it, when I pull my dog here from the chest, I can feel him kind of pulling back a little bit. Like, So I want you to think about like playing tug of war. So if somebody pulls on something, and you're more inclined to pull back. That's called oppositional reflex, and every mammal has it. And I want you to read up on it, because this is what is going on with your dog's leash. If you pull one way, they're more inclined to pull the other way. So if you have a dog who is motivated to go to the park and they are pulling and you're pulling them back, they're going to pull harder, even if they're <laughs> wheezing, walking really weird. Um, they're pulling even though it hurts them because it's part of their reflex. I'm pulling and it hurts, but it's getting me to where I need to go faster. The better way to do that is to actually train your dog and to learn how to do leash handling, um, appropriate leash handling. So in this case, I have here a platform. And one thing that we often will see, so instead of saying off and pulling him, I said off, I came in on this leash. It was loose here, but as soon as he started to move, it continued to get loose. If he blew me up, I wasn't going to pull. I don't want that tactile cue, that feeling of force to be the indicator that he has to move. Because if he doesn't have that leash on, or if he doesn't have a harness on and I need him to move and he's waiting for that pressure, he's not gonna get it. So I want him to be able to do this with and without the leash on and this is my emergency break. So if I want him to come up, I can use touch, I can use food, I can use whatever I need to do to get him up onto this platform. Again, this is loose. I'm taking up the extra leash here, off, yes. I'm not pulling my dog. And I think that is one of the hardest things in a lesson, and especially beginner classes, um, because our tendency is off, on, getting, oh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> We've been working a lot with up and on lately. Um, if you find that you are somebody who pulls your dog a lot, we can take your arms out of the equation. My leash is actually a hands-free leash. And so what I often will do with Captain is I will this is how I walk him in the mornings, in the afternoons, when I'm going into or out of a class. When I'm handling him in a class, I make this leash as a normal leash, but when I'm out in the world, I have him tethered here. In part, so I'm not tempted to pull him, but also he's pretty strong and I'm not that big of a person. So when he goes to pull, I can just bend my knees and he can knock me over. So if you're a kind of person that has like a Newfoundland or a Great Dane or an excited Doberman, this is one way that you could maybe start learning to walk. Teach yourself how to walk without using your arms. Make that muscle memory and start to communicate with your dog using two hands and know that you are safe and secure this way. If this is sitting right around your hips, on your hip bones, on your pelvis, if he goes to pull, he's going to have a much harder time pulling you over than if you're here and they tip you over. Um, this reduces a lot of injury. Now, that all being said, I want him off. Yes, good job. So I'm not pulling him. Up, yes. Up, up, down, yes. So use this as an emergency break. I'm going to see if I can get him to go around these cones. Something that I see a lot in my dog training classes too, I'm actually going to put him on his collar. So you can see, so imagine this is around your neck and somebody's trying to pull you through. Cap, come, and I go to pull here. That's gonna be really painful. Yes, he's going to come, but he didn't really learn that come means to follow me. I don't want come to mean follow me. I want come to mean you're over there, you race to me. So I have to be very clear in my body language and the terms that I'm using. Cap, off, yes. So to come around these, <laughs> but I get more reinforcement up here. Dogs will always do what works. So if, there have been, if they have been more recently reinforced somewhere or have been more reinforced somewhere, they're gonna keep doing that thing. Now, if I wanna start walking my dog, if you've looked at those loose leash walking videos, I talk a little bit about which hand to put the leash in when you're walking your dog. 
If my dog is on my right hand side, which is where I'm going to start him for this part of the video, I'm not going to have the leash in my right and the dog on my right and my food on the right. What that's going to do is that's going to make me need to take my treat and treat him, cat off, yes, and treat him here and look where he comes. He's right in front of me where I can kick him while I'm walking. Or if he's particularly excited or if he's really big and he gets in front of me, we can both get really hurt. So it's important to realize that the hardest part of leash handling is putting the leash on the opposite side from where your dog is. So now this arm is open, he's controlled here, my arm is through this loop, and I'm also picking up the slack here. Other trainers have different, uh, different ways of picking up the slack. My friend Donna does it all with her thumb. Um, I have other trainers that only use their thumb here. Um, in case the dog does pull and they don't want to go down, this way, this is kind of like a safety feature that they don't get hurt. Whatever you're comfortable with, whatever research you've read, whatever you feel comfortable with, have at it. As long as the dog is on appropriate equipment and you're not hurting your dog, I'm happy. Fetch. I'm gonna ask him to sit here. So now my treats are on my right, my hand is on my right, my dog is on my right, my leash is on the left. If I wanna walk a straight line up and down, I can use touch, yeah, let's go. Good job, so I can treat him here and he's staying next to me instead of, whoop, if I need to turn, I can use touch to turn him, let's go. So I've got my, he's gonna go up. <laughs> Good boy, he misses agility. Auntie Leah, we miss you. Um, but hopefully the dogs that you guys are working with go back and learn how to do loose leash walking with your dogs and just be aware, Captain, that wherever the dog is, it's your job to make sure this leash stays loose. If he were to go for it and that gets tight, I'm not pulling back necessarily, I'm holding my ground. I don't wanna jerk him back. Captain, now I can use touch. Yes, good job. I'm not going to pull him back. This had to be his choice to come back. Good boy. If he kept pulling, I'm not going to yank him like a lawnmower. If, you're, if you have a partner in the home and you're doing loose leash walking exercises with your dog, have your partner tell you if you're doing the patented lawnmower, like if you're doing this or holding the leash back like this or one of these while you're trying to walk your dog, this is not a loose leash. This is also not a very comfortable way for you to be walking around the street. So instead, make sure that your arm is 90 degrees, um, the side that your dog is on is open, and you're handling with that side. So if I need to move, cat, let's go. Leave it. Body block right there. So I can use my body to get between him and something that he wants. Leave it. Yes. If you guys have been watching the leave it videos in Manners 1, that's a more advanced leave it. That's what we're working up to. I said leave it. He moved away from it. If he didn't. So let's say I'm going to start walking up to it. Let's go. Leave it. I can body block here so he can't get to it touch here and then reinforce yes and I was holding the leash in the wrong hand it felt wrong to me to have my leash over on that side so I'm going to try to do it correctly now I'm going to see a couple more space on that side cheese is there dog is here ready let's go leave it yes touch yes good boy well done so I can use just very basic skills leave it and touch and making sure that this leash is on the right side, or the correct side, I should say, this is in my left hand right now, on the correct side, the dog is on the opposite side, and practice with that. Even if you just need to practice walking around without a leash at all, stay. One exercise you can do, touch, sit. If I wanna walk through space and I feel like I'm pulling on my dog, I can try without a leash. Because again, emergency break. So let's see if I can do it without even holding on to the leash. Let's go. This way. Yes. Good job. What do I have to do this way to keep my dog with me? This way. This way. This way. Can I go faster? Can I go stop? Yes. What do I have to do to keep my dog with me on that side without holding on to the leash? If the leash is distracting to you, Play in a safe place, a tennis court that closes, or your own kitchen. If you have an island in the middle of your kitchen, maybe practice like, 
I go down the right side of it and then the left, uh, the right side, the top, the left, the bottom with the dog on my left and then I can turn around and go the other way. Which way is easier? Which way is harder? Practice without a leash first. And then when you feel that you've got it, go ahead, put your dog on his harness and in your living room or your kitchen or whatever, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. This way. <laughs> 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 He's like, this isn't a thing we walk around. Sit. So again, reinforce for jumping up there. He's taken an agility class. He knows what that is. So what I'm going to instead do is find actual food, because I think I had him eat that whole cheese stick. Is there something you would like? So if my goal now is to get him to come around this instead of up onto it. Off. I'm going to reinforce for off instead of on. Sit. <clears throat> Thank you. So, leash is on my right, dog is on my left. I have extra food in my left hand, just in case, because this is gonna be hard. He's gonna wanna jump up onto that platform. Ready? Let's go. This way, this way. There's not a lot of space for you, buddy. I'm sorry. Off. Yes. So I'm gonna reinforce for behavior I like. Behavior including walking next to me. This way. This way, this way, sit. Yes, so now I'm gonna try the other way, but I'm going to switch my leash hand. This way, yeah. Uh-oh, off, yes. So reinforce for the behavior I like. I'm not trying to get him up onto that platform. I'm doing the opposite, so I'm not gonna give him a treat for going up there. That's not the skill I'm working on right now. Ready, this way. So imagine your primary reinforcement zone and your secondary reinforcement zone, those hula hoops. I'll put up a little link to that video here. But keeping those things in mind, reinforce for the things you like, keep one side open so your dog isn't crossing in front of you, and this is a, your emergency break. And until you can really do it without holding onto the leash in your own home, make sure you have an appropriate device on your dog so they can't really pull you as hard that you are reinforcing for the things that you like when you're outside, like attention, captain, yes. Um, and making sure that you are working really, really hard. If you have any questions, send me a note. We'll go from there.